virtue's ways lead us to life. Seek the Lord whose mercy abounds. Call aloud to God who is In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the love of Jesus Christ our brother, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. And sisters and brothers, we are beginning the first full week of Lent as we celebrate this first Sunday of Lent. Let's prepare our hearts to celebrate this holy season and this Eucharist together. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant through the yearly observance of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that was with you, all the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, This is the sign that I am giving for all ages to come of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant that I have made between me and you and all living beings, so that the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all mortal beings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your ways, O oh Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Your ways, O oh Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Your ways, O oh Lord, make known to me, teach me your path. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior, my Savior. Your ways, O oh Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your calling. Remember that your compassion, O oh Lord, and your love are from of old. In your kindness remember me because of your goodness, O oh Lord. Your ways, O oh Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant good
Good and upright is the Lord, thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice, and he teaches the humble his way. Your ways, O oh Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. In it, he also went to preach to the spirits in prison who had once been disobedient, while God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark in which a few persons, eight in all, were saved through water. This preconfigured baptism, which saves you now, it is not a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thy thanks be to God. that live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Have you been using your time of isolation to do more reading or to watch more television, maybe more Netflix? Whether it's a novel, a movie, a play, if you haven't read it or seen it before, what keeps you engaged is not knowing what's going to happen next. There's a sense of anticipation, of inquiry, of wonder. Now the author of the book or the script, the director, the actors in the play or movie know the plot and where it's going because the story has already been written. But the audience, is in the dark, waiting for the next event to happen, for the next decision to be made, for the next action to be taken. In a sense, it is that way with our stories too, isn't it? We know what has already transpired, but we don't know what's coming next. While we are actors in our own personal drama, we really don't know what's on the next page. 
Just look at how we were all, every one of us, caught off guard when the coronavirus pandemic hit. No one of us could have predicted its coming and its profound effects upon our lives and our world. The same might be said for the church. Those of us who have lived for decades within the church could never have imagined the profound effects of the clergy abuse scandal, the disappearance of the army of religious women who were the backbone of ministry for centuries, the alienation of young people from the church. Estimates are that an average of 6.5 young people leave the Catholic Church for everyone that joins. And 50% of young people who were raised Catholic are no longer Catholic today. Who could have imagined? And finally, there is our country with its intense political polarization, its growing economic disparity, and its deepening racial chasm. Now, while this may surprise us and make us painfully aware that we are not sure what is happening, and even less sure, or even, even if we can control what is happening, there is one major difference from the stories we have read or watch on the stage or TV and our stories. The difference is we know the ending of our story. In the end, we are all to live happily ever after with the Lord. Does that sound naive? Isn't that, in fact, what we are hoping for? Well, let's see if that's even possible, and what better time to reflect upon where we are going and how we might get there than now as we are beginning this season of Lent. The readings for this first Sunday of Lent set the goal before us right from the start. Our first reading from the book of Genesis describes the covenant that God makes not only with Noah and his descendants, but with the whole of creation. The vast terrorizing flood which Noah and his family experienced was a return to the primordial chaos out of which the world had been created in the first place. God's covenant promises God's control over the primordial chaos. From that chaos, eight were saved. Noah, Mrs. Noah, their three sons, and their three daughter-in-laws. Eight altogether. That's why traditional baptismal fonts, including the beautiful marble font in our church, are always octagonal in shape. The eight sides represent the eight people saved in the ark. But as the author of the first letter of Peter makes clear in our second reading today, these eight prefigure all those who will be saved through the waters of baptism of those fonts, the waters of baptism. And we know that Primordial chaos is not just about meteorological conditions at the time of Noah, but about the chaos that can occur in any of our lives at any time. When that chaos happens, God's promise is that we will not be alone. God, who shackled the forces of nature both at creation and at the flood, will be with us through our storms. Baptism recapitulates the flood and rainbow. And as Noah emerged and his family emerged from the ark into a new world, so we emerge from the waters of baptism as a new creation. This is the matrix by which we are called to understand not only today's readings, but our Lenten journey. But if we object and say, we're not preparing for baptism like the candidates of the Rite of Christian Initiation for Adult process, we should recall the words of Martin Luther, who said, baptism only takes a few minutes to do, but a lifetime to finish. And this brings us to our gospel story with Mark's constant sense of urgency. No sooner has Jesus been baptized by John than the Spirit drives him into the desert where he encounters Satan. There's none of the dialogue and specific temptations in this account like we find in the stories that Matthew and Luke give us. Jesus just stands between Satan and the wild beasts and the angels who minister to him. And then he goes forth to proclaim the coming of God's kingdom. Mark doesn't say how the temptation of Jesus ends, just as Mark does not say how the Easter story ends. Why? Because they don't end. The story of the temptation and the story of the resurrection become 
our stories. Through baptism, the life of Jesus becomes our life. So the question is always the same. During Lent, where are we to go? What are we to do? As I explained on Ash Wednesday, our parish team has chosen to emphasize the positive dimension of this season. Instead of even thinking, as we usually do during Lent, of what we can give up in a year when all of us have given up so much already due to the pandemic, we hope to find new ways, new perspectives, and new pathways to open us to the Spirit. Hopefully, this will point us in a new direction that can bring us through Lent into Easter joy. The liturgical commentator, Father Richard Fragamini, puts it this way. For too long, we have thought that Lent is a time for us to sacrifice our wants and desires and to give up things in order to devote ourselves to God. The readings for today and for all the Sundays of Lent show us that, in a sense, the opposite is true. This is not a time for us to deny ourselves something, but a time for us to receive. We are not the ones to accomplish great things for God. Rather, it is God who acts. It is God who makes the sacrifice. It is God who accomplishes things for us. The readings for this Sunday provide us with a kind of synopsis of the entire Lenten season. They acknowledge that we are living in the midst of conflict. They sketch God as initiating a relationship with us even in the midst of conflict. They end with a proclamation of the good news of salvation. This Lent, perhaps we are being called to celebrate this holy season as we have never celebrated it before, to set aside our impulse to establish goals, to draw up action plans, to decide on agendas, and instead to focus and to focus on what we're going to do for God, but instead, perhaps this Lent, maybe for the first time in our lives, we are being called to let God be God for us and to live these 40 days with peace, with hope, with trust, and with joy. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With confidence now, let us pray for our needs, the needs of the church, and the needs of the whole world. For the church, that all of the baptized open their hearts to the gospel, welcome the kingdom of God, and take God's love, peace, and mercy out to the world. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all public office, that there will be a new and determined effort to care for our common home, appreciate the wonder and beauty of the natural world. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For catechumens in the RCIA process, that they will be supported, encouraged, and affirmed in their faith communities as they make the journey towards the new light of Easter. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the success and widespread availability of the coronavirus vaccines, that the coronavirus vaccines will be successful in combating the virus and that it will become readily available throughout the world. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those suffering in body, mind, or spirit, and for the continued healing for all those who have received prayer shawls from our parish. For them we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all those who have passed into new life, especially John Bacon Sr. For them we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our personal needs and the intentions written in the parish prayer book, which we now offer in the silence of our heart. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, through our observance of Lent, help us to understand the meaning of your son's death and resurrection and teach us to reflect it in our lives. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, into the desert, lead us through the wilderness. Through this journey we will follow, for we long to see your face. In this time of sacred struggle, in this time sacrifice we rejoice for we remember that you lead us into life gracious God mercy is your name redeeming love you give your life your holy name receiving love we give our lives away Lord we hunger for your presence Lord we're thirsting for your grace when consuming all but you Pray, sisters and brothers, that this our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from our hands for the praise Amen. and glory of God's name, for our good and the Lord of all his holy church. O Lord, give us the right dispositions to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining 40 long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that, celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim.
Lord, you are holy indeed, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup and once more giving thanks, gave the cup to his friends saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and the everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate this memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life in this cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop and all who minister in your church and all your holy people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and our mother, and Joseph, her husband, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. together and pray with confidence for the coming of God's kingdom as Jesus our brother has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, we pray. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord Jesus be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let's safely share with each other a sign of the peace of Christ. Peace. 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 peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Though not physically present at this Mass, the baptized, as the baptized, we are intimately united as the body of Christ as we participate in the spiritual Holy Communion. Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. O Lord, may bountiful blessing come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Amen. And after our final hymn, we'll be back with a few announcements with Sister Jeremy. This Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. your faithfulness, O God of Jacob. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So remember your people. Remember your children. Remember God of Jacob, you use the weak to lead the strong. You lead us in the song of your salvation, and all your people sing along. So remember your. of St. Joseph University Parish is our commitment to social justice and to keep all of our activities going through this time of uh, the pandemic. Our uh, Refugee and Immigration Committee will be meeting virtually on Tuesday at 7 p.m. If you're interested in joining them to finding out some of the most recent updates in the change in immigration laws, uh, please contact Rob Midlecki. His uh, email address is on our screen and he will give you the Zoom uh, con uh, contact. Also, on Wednesday the 24th at 7 p.m., we will have the Zoom gathering regarding Waking Up White with author Debbie Irving. Yeah, we're Zooming a lot these days, aren't we? We had a Zoom new parishioner welcome on February 11th, I think, and we have another one coming up on March 11th. And they're very interesting. Uh, we get a chance. We usually do them in person when we're not uh, isolating like this, but it's another way of communicating with people, and we're so happy to welcome new parishioners. Some of them have been attending for quite a while, but now they're actually becoming an official part of this community. We we'll always welcome anyone. Look at our mission statement that's on online. All are welcome. All is capital bold letters and underlined. So you're always welcome at St. Joseph University Parish. So stay well, stay safe, and God bless you. Bye-bye. And who may go up the mountain of the Lord? Who can stand in his holy Their lives to him.